So I have uh, titled it as a study on the book of Ruth and I have given a subtitle. It says Ruin, Redeem and Reward. Ruin, Redeem, Reward. All right. So let's step into this book with prayer. Um, uh, when I when I want to start this course, you know, this this course or this classes on while studying the book of Ruth is mainly to give each one of us some perspectives, some uh, major themes uh, from uh, from this uh, study. All right. So some of the major perspectives and major themes that I want to bring before you through the study of this book of Ruth. And uh, I believe each and every one on this platform have read at least one time the book of Ruth. Ruth in the Pustogam, Uri Prausham Engilum, Waichitola Varana, E platform and online, Yamishosikino. Waichitilangil, at least Ruth in the Pustotelola, A Kade and Dana, A Paschatalam and Dana, you might know. I don't think anyone over here is unaware of what is happening in the book of Ruth. There is only like four chapters. You can read it in, you don't even, you won't even take an hour to read it. You can finish the book in just a few minutes. And uh, we all know the whole story and what is happening. But we will be diving a little deep into it, understanding the theme and some of the perspectives that we can get through it. It will be a spiritual blessing in each one of our life. So moving forward, so with that being said as an intro, let's look at uh, a broad timeline of, uh, of the, uh, maybe I would say the Old Testament, no? a broader timeline. We know uh, when it was in the BC 2000s, when God calls Abraham and gives him the vision and all those things, by the time it's 1500 BC, you know, it's the time of Moses, the Exodus, the Ten Commandments and things like that. And then it comes to um, 1000 BC, 1000 was King David. And then after that, moving forward, it's BC 930, it's the death of Solomon and then uh, then we know the kingdom divides into two, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And the destruction of the northern kingdom happens, the destruction of the southern kingdom happens, and then later on, the restoration. So this picture uh, that I just put before you to give you uh, a gist, uh, an understanding, an overall understanding of a timeline. Why? Because when you start reading the book of Ruth, starting itself, uh, the first verses it goes like this now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled when the judges ruled so the book of Ruth begins by giving us a time when is this thing happening this is not a story that happened or it didn't happen it's not a story that that is like a myth or something like that this is really something that happened an incident that really happened and it happened during the time when the judges during the time of judges um, so that is why this timeline is important when is this happening so somewhere between 1500 and bc th uh, thousand this is happening because before uh, king david came to throne there was king saul so it should happen somewhere before that as well so somewhere between that time period is this thing is happening so we know now it was during some time between the time of judges. Now the other thing is we come to know as we continue to read, we get to know that it also says about a, a, a city, like uh, there was someone in the, in the city of Bethlehem. So there is a city of Bethlehem that is mentioned. So even though this is a small book, either the informations, this gives clear record of when it happened and in which city it happened, the name of people that are involved in it and each and every detail is mentioned in it. Now, it, so it mentions about a city called city of Bethlehem. Bethlehem and the Varanda city is another mention. So, uh, studying about the city of Bethlehem, and you know, as I've put it on the uh, slide also for you to see, now, city of Bethlehem is like six miles south of Jerusalem, and it's located in the hill country of Judea. 
and uh, there are different ways you know the city of bethlehem is called sometimes it's called as ephrat it is also called as bethlehem ephrat and it's uh, also sometimes some some places it was called as bethlehem judah like in first samuel chapter 17 it's mentioned as bethlehem judah in micah chapter 5 and verse 2 it is called as bethlehem ephrat and uh, in the new testament it says the city of david now pudhi neemathilekku varumbol daavidinte pattanathil ningalkku vendi janichirikkunnu ennakke namu lukosthin suvishesha randam adhyayathil kaanu so bethlehem is referred in different names അപ്രകാരം പല നാമങ്ങളിൽ പല പേരുകളിൽ ഇപ്രകാരം ബൈബിളിൽ ഉടനീളം ബദലഹേമിനെ നമുക്ക് കാണുവാൻ കഴിയും ഇൻഫാക്ട് വെൻ വി വെൻ ടു ഇസ്രായൽ വി വി സ്റ്റോപ് ദാറ്റ് ബദലഹേം വി സ്റ്റേ ദറ്റ് വൺ നൈറ്റ് അറ്റ് ബദലഹേം ദ പ്ലേസ് ഇസ് സോ ഗഡ് ദ വാട്ടർ ആൻഡ് ബദലഹേം ഇസ് റിയലി ഗഡ് വി ഹാഡ് എ വണ്ടർഫുൾ നൈറ്റ് ദറ്റ് വി സ്പെൻഡ് ദർ ആൻഡ് ബദലഹേം സോ ഇഫ് എനി വൺ ഹാവ് ഗോൺ ടു ഇസ്രായേൽ യു ക്യാൻ ടെസ്റ്റിഫൈ ടു ദാറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ ഇഫ് എനി വൺ ഇസ് പ്ലാനിങ് ടു ഇൻ ദ കമ്മിങ് ഡേയ്സ് you know make every opportunity you not know, to stop by on these spots and to enjoy the city and uh, the nature all right so bethlehem city of bethlehem is mentioned but when we read that other aditha vaakyathil thane namak adu kaanuvan kariyum bethlehem bethlehem is mentioned in the first verse itself so whenever we read whenever we read the word of god i always say this nan eppozhu nan parayana oru sambhavana ബൈബിൾ പഠിക്കുന്ന ഒരു സ്റ്റുഡൻ്റ് ആണെങ്കിലും ഈവൻ ദോ യു ആർ എ സ്റ്റുഡൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് ദ വേർഡ് ഓഫ് ഗോഡ് ഓർ ഇഫ് യു ആർ എ പ്രീച്ചർ ഡോൺറ്റ് ജസ്റ്റ് സിംപ്ലി റീഡ് ആൻഡ് ഗോ ബൈ ഇഫ് ദർ ഇസ് എനി നെയിം ഓർ ഇഫ് ദർ ഇസ് എനി ടൈം ഓർ എ പേഴ്സൺസ് നെയിം ഓർ എനിത്തിൽ ജോസ് ജസ്റ്റ് സിംപ്ലി റീഡ് ആൻഡ് ഗോ യു സംസ് യു റീഡ് ദ ബുക്ക് ഓഫ് നമ്പേഴ്സ് യു മൈറ്റ് ഫൈൻഡ് സോ മെനി നെയിംസ് ആഫ്റ്റർ നെയിംസ് ഓർ മേ ബി ഓൾ ദോസ് തിങ്സ് യു നോസ് പ്ലേസസ് നെയിംസ് ആൻഡ് തിങ്സ് ജോസ് ഡോൺറ്റ് ജസ്റ്റ് സിംപ്ലി റീഡ് ആൻഡ് ഗോ ആസ് എ സ്റ്റുഡൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് ദ വേർഡ് യു നോ as or as a, someone who wants to know the bible more just stop there and try to think why is this name mentioned over there why is all these names mentioned in the word of god ee perugalokke allengil sthala perugalokke idine artham endana israel oru oru kudumbam undayirunno ennu parnja pore endu why that particular city uh, for example i live in uh, in georgia in atlanta or the city is lilburn that i live in if some somebody is writing a story about me some or somebody is telling about me they'll say oh there is uh, pastor danny from atlanta that's it they won't go to the detail of the city uh, that i live in lilburn or give that zip code or something like that uh, how, uh, they might say there is a pastor called pastor danny in atlanta but they went all the way to the city in bethlehem why is that mentioned uh, so as a student we need to like dig deep and try to understand what uh, the author is trying to say through these words and through these names and things like that adhe par ruth inde pustakam mathramalla any book that you study any uh, anything that you tr- uh, are learning you know try to get more detailed uh, what is what exactly might the author might be saying all right so bethlehem that is interesting right uh, there is a family in bethlehem wasn't there a different family the author could have picked up another family from another city you know why it is so important about the city why did they pick this city all right so bethlehem now this was also an ancient canaanite city bethlehem oru pale oru kananiya pattanam koodiyirun so so also an ancient canaanite city but the name was a little different instead of bethlehem this was called as bethlehmu this was called bethlehmu bethlehmu now uh, those of you from the middle east uh, uh, gulf rajyangal nalla പ്രിയപ്പെട്ടൊരു ഗൾഫിൽ നിന്നൊക്കെ വന്നവരും അറബി കുറച്ച് അറിയാവുന്നവർക്കൊക്കെ അറിയാം ബേത്ത് അത് അറബിയിലും ബേത്ത് എന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ ഭവനം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അ ഹൗസ് എന്നൊരു മീനിങ് ഉണ്ട് ബേത്ത് മീൻസ് ഹൗസ് ജസ്റ്റ് ദ സെയിം വേ ബേത്ത് മീൻസ് ഹൗസ് ഓർ എ ടെമ്പിൾ ഓക്കെ നാ ലഹമു വാസ് എ നെയിം ഓഫ് എ ഡേറ്റി ഓർ എ ഗോഡ് ഓക്കെ ലഹമു വാസ് എ നെയിം ഓഫ് എ ഡേറ്റി ആൻഡ് ദിസ് ഡേറ്റി വാസ് Uh, was for it was like a protective spirit it was a god of a protective spirit or god of war or god of water ida patanate samrakshikuna oru devante perayirunnu lahmo 
അത് അവരുടെ ഒരു അവരുടെ അവരെ സംരക്ഷിക്കുന്ന ഒരാത്മാവ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ മറ്റുള്ള സ്ഥലങ്ങളിൽ നിന്നും അവരെ യുദ്ധം ചെയ്ത് അവരെ സഹായിച്ച് അവരെ സംരക്ഷിക്കുന്ന ഒരു ദേവൻ്റെ പേരാണ് ലഹ്മു ഗാഡ് ഓഫ് എ പ്രൊട്ടക്റ്റീവ് സ്പിരിറ്റ് ഓർ ഗാഡ് ഓഫ് വാർ ഓർ ഗാഡ് ഓഫ് വാട്ടർ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അവർക്ക് വെള്ളം കൊടുക്കുന്ന ഒരു ദേവനായിരുന്നു ഈ ലഹ്മു സോ ദിസ് വാസ് എ പേഗൻ ഡേറ്റി ദ കാനൈറ്റ് ഡേറ്റി കോൾ ലഹ്മു ആൻഡ് യു ഹാവ് എ പിക്ചർ ഓവർ ദാറ്റ് ഐ ഹാവ് പുട്ട് ഇമേജ് ഓക്കെ ഓഫ് ഓഫ് ദാറ്റ് ഗാഡ് ഇറ്റ്സ് അവ പണ്ടത്തെ ഒരു വിഗ്രഹമാണ് വിഗ്രഹത്തിൽ കൊത്തി വെച്ചിരിക്കുന്നതാണ് അവരുടെ ദേവൻ്റെ ആ രൂപം ഓറൈറ്റ് ഇറ്റ്സ് നോട്ട് എ മേജർ കനനൈറ്റ് ഡേറ്റി ഒരു അവരുടെ കനാനിയറുടെ പ്രാധാന്യമുള്ള ഒരു വലിയ ദൈവമല്ല അവരുടെ പ്രാധാന്യമുള്ള ദൈവന്മാരെ കുറിച്ച് നമുക്ക് വചനത്തിൽ പല ഇടങ്ങളിൽ വായിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് വി റീഡ് അബൌട്ട് ദ കാനനൈറ്റ് ഗാഡ്സ് ഇൻ ദ ബൈബിൾ ആസ് വെൽ ലൈക്ക് ബാൽ ഓർ ലൈക്ക് അഷേറസ് ആൻഡ് തിങ്സ് ലൈക്ക് ദാറ്റ് ദോസ് വെർ ദ മേജർ മേജർ ഗാഡ്സ് ഓഫ് ദ കാനനൈറ്റ് ദിസ് വാസ് നോട്ട് എ മേജർ ഗാഡ് ബട്ട് ദിസ് വാസ് ദിസ് വാസ് എൻ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് ഡേറ്റി സോ ദാറ്റ് ദ സിറ്റി വാസ് കോൾഡ് ആഫ്റ്റർ ദാറ്റ് ഡേറ്റി ആൻഡ് ദിസ് ഡേറ്റി ഹാഡ് എ ടെമ്പിൾ ഇൻ ദാറ്റ് സിറ്റി ആൻഡ് ദേ വർഷിപ്ഡ് ഹിം സോ ദിസ് വാസ് കോൾഡ് ദ ഹൗസ് ഓഫ് ദാറ്റ് ഡേറ്റി ഈ ഒരു ദൈവൻ്റെ പേരിലായിരുന്നു ആ ഒരു പട്ടണം അറിഞ്ഞിരിക്കുന്നത് സോ ഇറ്റ് അത് ബേത്ത് ലഹമോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ആ ലഹമോ ദൈവൻ്റെ ഭവനം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ആലയം ഉള്ള പട്ടണം എന്നായിരുന്നു അറിയപ്പെട്ടിരുന്നത് സോ ആസ് ഐ സൈഡ് ബേത്ത് മീൻസ് ഹൗസ് ഓർ ടെമ്പിൾ ആൻഡ് ലഹമോ വാസ് ദ നെയിം ഓഫ് ദാറ്റ് Uh, God. മറ്റൊരു ഭാഗത്ത് ഇൻ ദ വേർഡ് ഓഫ് ഗാഡ് വി ഫൈൻഡ് എൻ അതർ പ്ലേസ് വി മൈ വി ഫൈൻഡ് ദിസ് പ്ലേസ് കോൾ ബേത്ത് ഷമീഷ് ബേത്ത് ഷമീഷ് എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ഒരു സ്ഥലം നമുക്ക് ബൈബിളിൽ കാണാം ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് അഗെയിൻ ബേത്ത് മീൻസ് ഹൗസ് ഓർ ടെമ്പിൾ ആൻഡ് ഷമീഷ് മീൻസ് സൺ സോ ബേത്ത് ഷമീഷ് മീൻസ് a place or a temple to the sun god suryane aaradhicha aa sthalathe aanu beth shamish ennu vilikkunnathu just like that beth lahamo another place is called jericho jericho namakku valare nallona ariyavunnayana jericho right jericho jericho patanam namakku we know it very well and even though there is no word called beth before jericho but that city of jericho uh, Uh, is the semitic word for that is moon so jericho may, meant moon or the, those were the the principal god of the people of jericho was moon worshippers or they worshiped the moon god so that is why they put that city name as jericho so uh, it is it is a common even even if you go to some of those uh, some some other places some other countries and you look at those names uh, you can dig deep and try to find out why that place was named like that and it would somewhere have a root of a pagan god so paganism is uh, is filled within this entire world and uh, uh, wherever you go place people name the places based on the god they worshiped or something that was so significant that happened over there and it is similar over here as was beth lehmo now the twist over here is the twist over here the wonderful twist over here is that or the wonderful irony over here is that the beth lehem became beth lehem in the bible beth lehem was changed to beth lehem where in the bible now beth lehem doesn't mean uh, war but beth lehem we know it is called the house of food appatende bhavana or of house of grain so what was once referred as a place of war or place of uh, a, a different spirit it became a place of grain or a place or a house of bread a house of bread uh, now why it was changed uh, so it became a house of bread which means that that place was fertile enough to give a lot of fruitfulness and the farmers they got the harvest and it was a city it was regarded as a market town you know other farmers can come over there they can sell their grain and even though this is a bit far south still it was it became a productive area the application something that we can learn from here no aditya oru vakyathil thanne oru vaadu oru vaadu aashayangal oru vaadu oru vaadu aalangalil കാര്യങ്ങൾ അതിലുണ്ട് ഇവൻ ഇൻ ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് വേർഡ്സ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഓഫ് 
the writer of this or the author of the book of Ruth has implanted or put in a lot of deeper, deeper meaning into it. And the application that we can get out of this is that God can and he does change his names. He does change names. And whenever he does change name, he turns it for good. Look throughout the Bible, friends. We find so many places that names were changed. And Luz was changed to Bethel. And now Luz became Bethel. You know, the name of Abraham became Abraham. Sarai became Sarah. You know, when we come to New Testament again, you find different names and things like that have changed. And wherever God has changed names, God has shown how, before how it was. And when the moment God has changed names, it totally becomes something so useful and so much good. No, something that was meant for destruction. God suddenly turns it to be the most productive thing that people can ever see or imagine. You know, when you read in the life of Joseph, Joseph uh, you know, what you meant for evil, God turned it for good. Just the same way, what that place was, it was controlled by a pagan god called Lehemu. And it, they, the, the, the locals, they, the Canaanites, they worshipped him for protection and for spirit, the protective spirit and for war and for water and all those things. But the moment God and his promise stepped into that place, things changed. What was once known for that God Lehemu was now known for a house of bread. Friends, let me tell you, when God steps in each one of your life, or when the promise of God steps into your life, or when God has a promise that he is giving into your life, a covenant that he is making with your life. Friends, let me tell you, your life is totally changed. Your life is totally changed. Now see, God and his promises, walk the tomb, walk the genevum, Bethlehem, Lehamu, like a it became a Bethlehem. It became a house of bread you know when uh, uh you know when or did they by the when when you look at a child of god we can find the difference right a child of god who truly trusts in god who has god in his life who has the promise of god in his life who has the word of god in his life it's so evident you know his life is totally different from the other people it's not that there is no storm it's not that there is no wind that is hitting you know of course there is the same storm that is hitting it is the same rain that is hitting even on the house of a believer uh, but what is holding him what is the difference what is the difference is that the, he has God or there is God and his promises. That house of a believer or the life of a believer is built on the promises of God, is built on the on his foundation. And the moment you hold on to that, your life is totally different. No more the previous life. Friends, the beginning itself, that first verse itself, there's so much in depth of meaning and so much understanding in that. If I have to explain that and go that, it will take forever and ever so many things to mention on that but friends as beginning of this class itself as an encouragement let me tell you let our foundation be on god and his promises can somebody say amen to that this year itself the beginning of this year itself can we just say yes it's only the first month of january right now I don't know, some of you might have already gone through struggles or may be still carrying the struggles of the previous year or some of you might face some struggles or some challenges in the coming months. But whatever it might be, friends, whatever, I'm not immune to any struggles or challenges. Even me who is preaching or speaking to you or teaching you this word, even I can go through or I will face challenges. As Jesus said, in this world, you would surely have problems. But what makes us different from others, what makes us different from the Canaanites or what makes us different from all the other worshippers of the pagan God is that we hold on to his promise and his foundation. We don't hold on to any other addictions. We don't hold on to any other temporal means of satisfaction or temporal uh, uh, gratifications. We hold on to his promise and his foundation. And that is what changes everything from others. 
So it can change Bet Lehmo to Bet Lehem. Amen. Now, let me move forward. Look at the period that's happening. I already mentioned it before. The first verse itself says what time it is happening. You know, it is happening during the time of judges. I gave you the broader picture, right? Uh, from the time of Abraham till restoration, what is happening? And uh, the book of Ruth says that this incident or story or this historical fact is happening during the time of judges or the period of judges uh, somewhere between uh, if we could say uh, from 1200 to 1020 bc uh, there is this is the period of judges you know the, the period of when the judges ruled 180 years this is the uh, period and if you look at each of these uh, judges you know uh, a list of judges we have uh, Othniel, starting with Othniel, then we have Ehud, we have Shamgar, we have Deborah, we have Gideon, Tola, Jair, Jephthah, Ibsen, Elorn, Abdon, and Samson. So we have all these judges uh, in, who judged Israel. Some of them were minor judges, some of them are major judges, some of them have two, three chapters uh, that is mentioning their story, some of them have only a few verses or maybe a a few lines but uh, these are the judges who ruled um, or who judged uh, Israel that will be the word who judged Israel in their time now uh, clearly it says in the first verse it was during the time of judges it was during the time of judges now even that has some great importance you need to keep all these information in the back of our mind and uh, it will be good if, uh, to take notes so you can go back and read and refer it and share it with others as well. So all these have importance, you know, uh, it was during the time of judges. Now, why is judges so important? Why is judges so important? Look at the picture over there. We all know what, is, what was happening during time of judges. Uh, it was a great time of apostasy for Israel. They went away from the covenant. They went away from the law of God. They went away from the commandments that God has given. And uh, when they, whenever they did that, the nation went on, they underwent a lot of turmoil, maybe political, religious, and other nations came and attacked and took parts of the land. And, uh, and it was a lot of commotion that was happening if you look at the cycle that if you look at this picture that is there on the on the side you know if you look you can see the israelites they sinned and the moment they sin uh the next thing is that god sent judgment judgment well might will be in the form of other nations coming and attacking them and taking them as slavery and things like that when things were so difficult for them they would turn back to god and they would repent and they would pray and then God would send raise up a judge from their midst and God would raise up a judge from their midst and that judge will judge for them or would uh, uh, go and fight for them and bring that victory for them and teach the people hey this is what you guys did wrong now let's come back and let's get back with God let's settle this straight with God and then they would have a time of peace but the problem is again the cycle will continue again you know again it is going to happen again so this keeps on spinning and spinning throughout the book of judges if you read the book of judges uh, first you will you will start and you will read and you will find it will read. in those days uh, um, uh, you know the people did as they liked uh, and they did evil in the sight of god uh, you will read that they did evil in the sight of God. After a couple of chapters, uh, all those victory that God gives, again in the next chapter it begins, oh, so in those days, they again did evil in the sight of God, and they went away from the presence of God, all this. So the cycle keeps on repeating. But the problem is that uh, this is not just a cycle that is repeating, but each time the cycle rep uh, repeats, it's not getting better, it's getting worse. Like initially, maybe they did a small sin, but 
next time when the cycle repeats the sin is getting out of control little more out of control they're doing bigger sin and so the judgment is a little more bigger and so the punishment is bigger then comes a judge who have to stand for that and give a bigger uh, fight for them and then god gives a little bit. but again when they sin the judge uh, they do much more bigger thing and then it does the cycle is it's a, it's getting progressively it's getting worse the further and further it goes it's going downwards and it's not just a repeated cycle so uh, as i said when they repented and they uh, god gave them deliverance and god raised judges or in hebrew the, the judges are called shepat so god gave them a judge a shepat and uh, they were uh, the judge uh, would uh, would stand for them and fight for them now in today when you look judge is like a court language or a court of the land of the or a judge they can another uh yeah but now you have a camera car another quarter the they are all wearing this black coat and things like that uh, and they're sitting in the judge with the gavel in their hand and, uh, but this is not like that there was no court and some judge was sitting in like black court and no these were like military leaders who were charismatic figures they god gave them and appointed them for the time as that and gave them spiritual gifts and abilities to bring the nation out of the bondage of their enemies or to deliver the people out of their misery so those were the judges but even though judges god raised judges for each period or during each of these cycle god raised judges but all these judges even though they gave a kind of a delivery they on the flip side they have their own weaknesses as well in their personal life they had some weakness as well you know uh, we find we, we find many heroes of faith but each of them were flawed in their own individual ways you know uh, they delivered Israel in the most dramatic form, but at the same time, there was also a flawed side of all these judges as well. Now, uh, when you read the book of Judges, now you might think, am I teaching the book of Judges or am I teaching, teaching the book of Ruth? Uh, but since Judges are mentioned, we need to get an idea of Judges before we enter or we go further in the book of Ruth. Uh, but when you read the book of Judges, you find uh, so much graphic, so much violence, so much disturbing scenes in all those uh, scriptures. Uh, but through it all, uh, God is showing how God is working in the midst of his people. Now, what is the big idea that we need to get from all this? Especially why it's mentioned the Judges. It was during the time of Judges. The primary message is that God will not allow sin to go unpunished. Pabam chaydatta devam pavatthin umbel anga kannada chitta. Pabatthin oryo shikshavadhi kodikade uri kelum pogatthilla. You know, uh, God would never uh, go, uh, do that. You know, God would never allow sin to go unpunished. That we need to be very careful. Sometimes uh, we hear of preachers or people saying, <clears throat> you know we are in the time of grace no as long as we are under the grace it doesn't matter you know whatever it is we have done there is grace you know uh, the other day uh, during our fasting prayer one of the fasting prayer when shiva pastor mentioned about that he said we we sometimes take grace so much that it has become so greasy it's a greasy grace you know then you will otherwise that greasy grace will only for all carella not a canada you know uh, they gave uh, a grace we have misused grace so much left and right that we have misused the grace of god and um, just misused so much that oh it doesn't matter whatever we do we are in grace but we have to understand that sin god never allows sin to go unpunished now listen friends uh, israel was god's people he was their king but they forsook, they, they forsaken the covenant uh, that was established on Mount Sinai. And when you come to the book of Judges, God is disciplining them for following other gods, disobeying his sacrificial laws, engagement, engaging in immorality and uh, doing a lot of things and uh, descending in anarchy uh, at times, you know. Uh, 
ന്യായാധിപന്മാരുടെ പുസ്തകത്തിൽ നാം വായിക്കുമ്പോൾ ഓരോ സമയത്തും ജനം ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ പ്രമാണത്തിൽ നിന്നും വിട്ടുപോകുന്നു അവർ അന്യാരാധനകൾ ചെയ്യുന്നു അന്യ ദൈവന്മാരെ ആരാധിക്കുന്നു അഗർ അകൃത്യത്തിൽ അവർ കൈ നീട്ടി അവർ അതിൽ അകൃത്യം ചെയ്യുന്നു അവർ പല അശുദ്ധ കാര്യങ്ങൾ ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ ഗോഡ് ഈസ് ഡിസിപ്ലിനിങ് ദ ഗോഡ് ഈസ് നോട്ട് ഡിസ്ട്രോയിങ് ദ ബട്ട് ഗോഡ് ഈസ് ഡിസിപ്ലിനിങ് ഹിസ് ഓൺ പീപ്പിൾ യുനോ because israel his his people uh, when the when the people are being disciplined they cry out to god for mercy and god raises a deliverer for them but unfortunately again these people fall into the same thing or a different sin or they are influenced by the canaanite sinfulness and they go back into that and they they forsake god and everything so this cycle keeps on continuing again and again and again and during when the cycle was happening ipragaram janam paapam cheyunu avare shatrukal vanna attack cheyunu appolo nayadivanmar varunu rakshikunu samadhanam pinnem paapam aa oru cycle nadanondirikkana samayathana ee ruthinte ee oru charitram adinte edakke nadakkunathu so in the back of our mind we need to keep it what was the time it was a time when people were sinning people and the sin is not like each time they do one sin no that is increasing it is progressing they are doing bigger 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 things each and every time and one of those times in one of those during one of those judges time the ruth story is happening all right it is the time of ruth is during the judges during the period of judges now what happened during that time we all we just we just saw and the key verse in the book of judges is in those days there was what no king in israel so what happened everyone did what was right in their own eyes aa samayathe israel oru rajavilayirunnu oru orthan tande drushtiyil nalladu nu thoniyathu alle tande drushtiyil avarku nalladu endana thonni avaru adanga cheyvan idayai ഒരാളുടെ ദൃഷ്ടിയിൽ കൊലപാതകം നല്ല എന്ന് തോന്നുമ്പോൾ ആ ആൾ കൊലപാതകം മറ്റൊരു ദൃഷ്ടിയിൽ അകൃത്യം ചെയ്യുന്ന അവരുടെ ദൃഷ്ടി ദിസ് ഇസ് റൈറ്റ് നോട്ട് മോറാലിറ്റി ഈസ് റൈറ്റ് ഇൻ മൈ ഐസ് ദി ബിക്കാൻ ടു ഡു ദാറ്റ് ഓൾ ബിക്കോസ് ദി ഡിൻ ഹാവ് എ കിങ് ഇൻ ഇസ്രായേൽ ഈവൻ ദോ ഗാഡ് വാസ് ദിയർ കിങ് ദേ നെവർ ബോതേഡ് ടു ഗിവ് ഗാഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഓണർ ആൻഡ് റെസ്പെക്ട് ആൻഡ് ദേ ജസ്റ്റ് ഇറ്റ് വാട്ട് വാസ് ഇൻ ദിയർ റൈറ്റ് ഇൻ ദിയർ ഓൺ ഐസ് now when we open the book of ruth and the very first word we read now it happened in the days of in the days when judges were judging nyayapalaganmar nyayapalanam cheyina samayathana ee oru sambhavam nadakkunathu many a times we just read that verse and we just go but in the in hebrew it is very much strongly implied over there it was a time when judges were judging when the judges were judging in english also sometimes it is smoothed out it was during the time of a judge or something like that it's sometimes smoothed out but it is very important to note that it was a time when the judges was uh judging it is repeated again and again sometimes certain words or certain phrases are repeated to strongly emphasize the time it is very important a judge was judging which means that there was some sin that is happening in that land and there was a judgment of god devathinte oru nyaya vidhi vannu aa samayathe oru nyaya balagan ezhunetu aa samayamana so and it says what was the judgment that god gave and it was a famine in the land shamam aadeshath shamam undaguvan edai shamam undaguvan edai you know and uh, it gives us a clear picture of what was the time and what was the judgment that is happening you know now how do i apply that in my life we looked at the place bethlehem nammal kandu avade eduthittund bethlehem il nadakkuna oru sambhavana and how that we apply in our life now look at this it is had during the time of judges this is happening how do we apply that in our life how do we apply now look there is famine in the land friends let me tell you sometimes god uses famine to discipline his people chela shamamukku devam kondu varunathu nammale onna 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 discipline cheyvanana ഒരച്ചടക്കത്തിലേക്ക് കൊണ്ടുവരാണ് ചില കാര്യങ്ങളൊക്കെ ഓർമ്മിപ്പിക്കുവാനാണ് 
to bring us back into track god might bring a famine you know uh, but we need to discern it is it from god or is it the devil bringing this famine so but we need to have that spirit of discernment and if it is from god we need to learn and understand hey what is god teaching me or teaching us through this famine no jeevithathil oru shaamam undagumbol adu devathil ninnu varuna oru shaamam anengil aa shaamathil kode devam endano enne padipikkuvan aagrahikkunnathu ennu nam manasilaakkanam amen you know it's by famine i don't mean a literal famine that you don't have food famine can be in different areas not just in food famine can be in the area of productivity famine can be in the in the area of peace famine can be in the area of love famine can be in the area of joy famine can be in the air, in many areas of your life you can face a famine a different ways pala devathil pala meghalagalil shaamam vara aa meghalagalil shaamam varumbol in that famine you need to understand hey did god bring this famine in my life if it is from god what is god trying to teach me through this famine what is it that i need to set straight in order for me to get out of famine now when i say about famine let me give you a flip side as well not always that god will give you a famine to discipline us god would also give us abundance in order to discipline us chelapol nammada jeevithathil oru shaamam vannattana nammala devam chela karyangal ormippikkunnathu pashi ella ippolum devam shaamam kondu vanna nammale ormippikkilla chelapol samdruptiyilum devam chelapol nammale chelathokka padipikkuvan idiyaakum even through abundance god can teach or god can discipline his people uh, if you look uh, during the time of gideon another judge gideon during the time of gideon it was not famine famine was not the issue over there in fact during the time of gideon there was enough food their productivity was high um, people sowed in the land and they got a really good harvest but the problem there was they couldn't enjoy the harvest agidiyonde samayatha shaamam allayirunnu prashna aa samayatha avaru vithu vidachu ande vilavinte samayatha dharalam vilavunde pashe avaru vidachathu avarku koyyuvano avarku adu anubhavikkuvano kaiyunnilla avarku vilavu labichu pashe aa vilav avarku anubhavikkan labikkayunnilla you know the moment when it is time to enjoy the harvest the enemy comes and takes it away you know uh sometimes you might have everything but you cannot enjoy it you know uh when people look you know this is how uh, this is the way that we can put it in a practice or bring it as an application into our life you know when people look on the outside you have everything you know uh, on the outside everything but you know the struggle that you are going through you might have a big house but there is no peace inside the big house financially everything is good but there is you are very well you no know, you have a good bank balance but there is no joy or peace in your life when that is the issue you need to check hey what is god trying to remind me everything is in abundance but even in that abundance i'm not able to enjoy that or i'm not able to enjoy that abundance that god has given to me in that season what is god reminding me where it is that i need to rise up as a gideon in those season chela kalagattathil samdrupti undengilum aa samdruptiyil namakkonu sandoshikkan kazhiyunnilla ella undengilum porame ella undengilum adinu oru sandosham illa allengil adinu oru adu namakku labikkunnilla aa samayathu nam manasilakkanam idilude deivam endana enne padipikkunnathu evadeyana ende kudumba jeevithathil agatte vyaktiparamaya jeevithathil agatte edu meghala agatte evadana njan gideyone pole ee oru kalagattathil elnelkkandathu friends that is another flip side how god can not always god will give a famine and teach you but god can give you abundance and then teach you hey why you're not able to enjoy the abundance check for the areas in your life another is memory is a good gift you know friends memory is a good gift that god has given to us orma namakku thandathu you know uh, there are many lessons god has taught us in the past even through the book of judges even through the book of ruth god has taught 
as people and that is like a memory like a gift for us but israelites they forgot each and every time god gives them a deliverance once the deliverance and they had that peace they forget it they forget it they don't keep that in their memory they just forget it they don't remember the miracles or the events that god has brought them they just completely forget but you know what god does not forget his covenant amen god doesn't forget his covenant and because of his great love for his people let me tell you this he disciplines his sinful children so they can return back to him janam devathinte vaagathavum devathinte aa udambadi okka marnu poyalum they udambadi cheda devam orikkelu adu marakkatilla udambadi cheda devam adu nivartikkuvan vishwasthan athre but in order for god to fulfill that covenant or a promise in the people of god or in israelites or even in our life if we have gone away from it god wants to realign us bring us back on track in order to fulfill that promise uh, in each one of our life and when he does that there will be times when god will discipline us you know chala bala shishayil kodeyakka devam nammale nadathan sadhathagal undu naam thetti pogumbol bala shishya nalgi nammale tirichu kondu varuvan edeyagu adakka nammalde jeevathil verumbol nammale thagarkuvano nashippichu kalayavano anga mudippichu kalayavalla paattu varan parayana nalla thagarkuvano mudippikkuvano alla പക്ഷെ നമ്മളെ ആ വാഗ്ദത്വത്തിലേക്ക് മടക്കി കൊണ്ടുവരുവാൻ ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ ആ വലിയ ആ വാഗ്ദത്വം നമ്മുടെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ നിറവേറാനാണ് ഹി ഈസ് ഡിസിപ്ലിനിങ് അസ് ഓ റൈറ്റ് സോ വെൻ വി ആർ ബീങ് ഡിസിപ്ലിൻഡ് ബൈ ഗോഡ് ജസ്റ്റ് തിങ്ക് ദർ ആർ സ്റ്റിൽ പ്രോമിസസ് ദറ്റ് ഗോഡ് വാൺസ് ടു ഫുൾഫിൽ ഇൻ അവർ ലൈഫ് ദർ ആർ സ്റ്റിൽ മെനി ഗ്രേറ്റർ തിങ്സ് യുവർ ബട്ട് ഇഫ് ടുഡേ ഇഫ് എനി വൺ ഈസ് ഗോയിങ് ത്രൂ അ ഡിസിപ്ലിനിങ് of god if anyone is facing the discipline of god just be just enjoy that and get back to god because he wants to bring you back in order to fulfill greater promise in each one of your life i want to ask this question to everyone over here have you forgotten the great works god has done in your life in your life uh, maybe perhaps your difficult circumstances are overpowering your faith do you feel as if his He is is God disciplining me right now but in the book of hebrews chapter 12 and verse 5 it says he disciplines those he loves he disciplines those he loves deiva snehikkunavareyana deiva aa bala shishya kodutte kondu varunathu return to him remember trust and obey because god is waiting with an open arms all right so the book of ruth is written during the time of judges a lot of things if i want to say i can say standing over there a lot of things but it is written during the time of judges now if we want to give a specific time as i said it's a broad time you know 180 years but shey idinde evadana idinde ruth inde samo where in this long years or all these 12 uh, 13 uh, judges were there but in in that during which judge or during which time is ruth that is debatable you know there are many debates some people say it was during the time of ehud some people say it was during the time of jephtha some people say it was uh, some other time so we exactly cannot pinpoint and say hey, this is the time when uh, ruth was written but uh, we can assume it could be during the time of ehud or jephtha or when israel had a domin- domination over moab during that time so but on the overall as the writer says it was during the time of judges now second one is who wrote ruth aarana ruth inde pustakam ezhudina you know sometimes we think oro pustakathinu ayinte peru onnu shamail rendu shamail ah shamail adha ezhudina ah pudhi neemathil verumbol chalapol namakku athra arithilengil philomon akka kanumbo nammal ikkira philomon ayirikka pustakam ezhudina ah so ഒന്ന് തിമോത്തി രണ്ട് തിമോത്തി ഓക്കെ തിമോത്തി ആയിരിക്കും അത് എഴുതിയത് സോ വി നീഡ് ടു അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് നോ ജസ്റ്റ് ബിക്കോസ് ദ നെയിം ഇസ് ഗിവൺ ടു അ പേഴ്സൺ ഓഫ് പേഴ്സൺസ് നെയിം ഇസ് ദയർ ഡസൻ മീൻ ദാറ്റ് പേഴ്സൺ റോട്ട് ദ ബുക്ക് സോ വി നീഡ് ടു അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് ഹു റോട്ട് അഗെയിൻ വിത്ത് ദ ബുക്ക് ഓഫ് റൂത്ത് ഇറ്റ്സ് വെരി ഇൻട്രസ്റ്റിങ് ദർ ആർ മെനി പീപ്പിൾ സേസ് ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് പീ ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് നെയിംസ് ഹു റോട്ട് ദ ബുക്ക് ഓഫ് റൂത്ത് ഓഫ് കോഴ്സ് വി ക്യാൻ സേ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് റിട്ടൺ ബൈ റൂത്ത് Uh, it was written by someone later because there are many clues now the jewish tradition says that prophet samuel wrote the book of ruth okay i'm just giving you one uh, 
uh, one person who might have written the book of Ruth or maybe Prophet Samuel wrote it and uh, there are many other if you if you google it or if you study some of the writings and all you will find so many reasons why they want to say somebody else wrote it but I'm just saying uh, Prophet Samuel one of the reason I, I'm, I have just stepped down why it is Prophet Samuel who might have written the book of uh, Ruth. Um, the book of Ruth doesn't say who the author is but whoever wrote it was a skillful storyteller. There's so skilled in writing this. That is why the it says that God's word is God's breath. It is inspired word of God. Because in a human knowledge i don't think anyone can write this wonderful book and this wonderfully nobody can write this book because when i go much further you will understand that no one can write on a human mind but it should be the work of god or god inspired their author and they wrote it that is why it is so beautiful it is so much wonderful some of the hint i know hints that uh, says okay it is uh, uh it says like the final chapter when you read you know in the book it says that ruth was the great you uh, know the grandson you know, or the great uh, the great grandson of ruth was david is mentioned over there so someone who has seen david should have written this book because it is a great grandson. I don't know. Ruth Ruth was not anyways alive till then. So Ruth cannot write it. So it should be someone who knows that or who have seen that has written. Uh, and also we know that it was written after his anointing. Then the genealogy at the end of the book of Ruth. It shows David's lineage through the day uh, through the days of judges, which until the his rightful kingship. So it should be over there. Again, Solomon is not mentioned. So, so people believe it should be someone during the time of early time of David uh, that wrote this and uh, it should be written right before uh, David was ascended to throne. So someone during that time, so prophet, it could be prophet Samuel or they, are, they give many other names. I don't want to go into all that because that itself will take a long class. I don't want to go there. But someone who knows at least David's because grandson till David, David and they are very lineage where Ruth and Debustotil mentioned it. So it should be someone uh, who knows David, uh, was able to trace it back to Ruth. So who wrote Ruth? We don't know. But the Jewish tradition says it is a Jewish Talmud or Jewish tradition says it was by prophet Samuel. All right. Now we are moving a little more inside into the book of Ruth. Um, as I said, this book of Ruth is so wonderfully written, so wonderfully written. You know, I have read this book of Ruth a couple of times back in my seminary. Also, I have read it many times because we had to do a couple of projects in the church, including when we were studying Hebrew, we have to uh, translate this entire book of Ruth uh, from Hebrew to English and things like that. So in different ways, I have studied this book of Ruth. But each time I read the book of Ruth, there is new, new insights that God puts in my heart. I could see new, new insights, new things that God is showing through the book of Ruth. Couple of them, I would just show it right now before you as time permits. Before we run out of time, I want to put before you a couple of themes. Even in the classes that is coming also, I would be showing some of these themes and some of the other things as well from this book. But... As I said, only four chapters, but it's so much thing to get out of that chapter. Um, uh, so much, so much, so much themes and so many things are there in the book of Ruth. You know, one word in the book of Ruth is glean, glean. Or Malayalatil Parayi Anangil, Ruth Anangil, Boas and the Vailil Poi, Kala Parakin or Eparnitundal. Gleaned in the field of Boas is written there. Just the same way, if you are ready to glean in the book of Ruth, 
you would get enough. You would get enough and God would give you enough to glean for each and every day. Oro dhuvaso parakwaan orladha kala parakwaan iruthu nda pustoti inna namakkum devan tharim. Iruthu maathra mawasa nda vailil poi kala parakkum namal vayichit ondengil. Namal adhuvale ora uru urikkatho oda iruthu nda pustoti il kheru anengil. Aavishuthil adhigam kala parakwaan ee pustoti il nanda namakk lebikku anadayam. So there are many many themes that um, you find in this book. The first is a kinsman redeemer. Kingsman Redeemer. Um, this I am not going to touch today because we will be going into a little more detail into this in the coming class. But one of the theme is Kinsman Redeemer. Just keep that in your mind. So I am just skipping this and I am going to go forward into the next one. But you can write it. If you are taking note, you can write down one of the major theme uh, that everybody says. One theme. Uh, a redeemer about a redeemer it's there throughout this uh, book about a redeemer but we'll go a little more detail into that later on in, uh, in the other classes so i'm just skipping this the next one is righteousness during moral decay righteousness during moral decay i don't know how many of you have noticed this righteousness during a moral decay this is an important theme in this book now listen to me very carefully okay uh, I am trying to make it so simple and so interesting for each one of you. So, just listen. As we read in that first verse, you see, the first verse we read, it was during the time of judges where judging and there was famine in the land. Alright? Uh, so, it was a time when people were facing God's judgment. Why was people facing God's judgment? Because they sinned. Now, uh, they are struggling and they are looking to God for help. The only reason uh, there is famine is because God shut heaven and God didn't give that expected rainfall. They had famine. And God would do that because they were not compliant to Torah. God gave them the command and they were turned, they turned away from God. And God wanted the people uh, to turn back to God. But when you read that, uh, that uh, book, you know, this, uh, this book of Ruth, it's very interesting. Um, let me just take that uh, book. It says like this. Um, uh, it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab. He and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech. All right. The name of the man was Elimelech. Okay. Now, there was one man who decides to get out of that town. Everything that was happening in that town, this man was willing to get out of that town. And interestingly, he didn't go by himself. He took his wife. He took his family. Now, look carefully. This man is a righteous man. All right. Uh, the surprise in the book of Ruth is that we find a righteousness of this man and this woman. Uh, even when there is people who have gone away from God, there is this man and a woman who is righteous. There is a righteous couple over there. Or in other words, there is the righteous people who, who is living during a time of moral decay. Because a small famine is enough for some to leave their wife and husband. Now, 
അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഭാര്യ ഭർത്താവിനെ വിട്ടിട്ട് പോകാൻ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ചെറിയൊരു ക്ഷാമം വരാൻ നോക്കിയിരിക്കുന്നത് ലുക്കിംഗ് ഫോർ എ സ്മോൾ ഫാമൻ ഇൻ ഓർഡർ ടു കിൽ ദിയർ ഓൺ ചിൽഡ്രൻ ആൻഡ് കുക്ക് ആൻഡ് ഈറ്റ് വി നോ ഇൻ ദി അതർ ബുക്സ് വി റീ ഡ്യൂറിംഗ് ദ ടൈം ഓഫ് ഫസ്റ്റ് കിങ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾ ദ ദ പീപ്പിൾ ഓഫ് ഇസ്രായേൽ ഡ്യൂറിംഗ് ആൻഡ് അതർ ഫാമൻ ഇൻ സിറിയ ദേ ദ കിൽ ദിയർ ഓൺ ചിൽഡ്രൻ ദ കുക്ക് ആൻഡ് ഈറ്റ് ദ ഡി മെയ്ഡ് ദ ഡിസിഷൻ ലെറ്റ്സ് കുക്ക് അ മൈ ചൈൽഡ് ടുഡേ ടുമോറോ വിൽ കുക്ക് യുവേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഈറ്റ് യു നോ that is a kind of morality the people had that is a moral decay that was happening husbands are leaving their wife wife is leaving their husband there is adultery there is immorality people are leaving the covenant and going there is a lot of things that is happening outside the covenant of god and god gave a famine and even in the midst of famine is more i mean no need of famine a small issue is enough for a big fight to happen but now if there is a bigger fight and look there is a husband and wife there together with their children righteousness they are standing together as a family making a decision hey we don't want to be part of this family let's go somewhere Let, he's trying to take his family out of that family trying to provide friends standing over there that is a thought that we all need to think standing over there we need to think hey don't we also live in a time of moral decay each and every day the morality of this world is coming to a very low standard oro divaso nokumbol ee logathinte morality ingena koranju 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 verigana the morality of this world is decaying but in the midst of that we who are called as the believers or we who are called as the children of god we who have received that light of salvation in our life rakshayude aa oru prakashanam labicha nammal oru oru ഈ മൊറാലിറ്റിയൊക്കെ അധപ്പതിക്കുന്ന ഈ സമൂഹത്തിന് നടുവിൽ ക്യാൻ വി ജസ്റ്റ് ഷൈൻ ബ്രൈറ്റ് ആൻഡ് സ്റ്റാൻഡ് ആസ് റൈറ്റ്യസ് പീപ്പിൾ ലെറ്റ് പീപ്പിൾ അറൗണ്ട് അസ് ഡു വാട്ട് എവർ ദൈ വാണ്ട് ദ ബട്ട് ഇൻ ദ മിഡ്സ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ദാറ്റ് ക്യാൻ വി സ്റ്റാൻഡ് ഓർ ക്യാൻ വി ഷോ വാട്ട് ദ റൈറ്റ്യസ്നെസ് ഓഫ് ഗാഡ് ഇൻ ഇസ് ത്രൂ അവർ ലൈഫ് നമ്മുടെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ കൂടെ ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ നീതികർ നീതി നമുക്കൊന്ന് ഒന്ന് കാണിക്കുവാൻ കഴിയുമോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ജനം നമ്മളെ നോക്കി പറയണം ഹൈ എന്തൊക്കെ സംഭവിച്ചാലും ആ ഒരു വ്യക്തി ഒരു നീതിമാനായ ഒരാളാണ് ഹി ഈസ് എ റൈറ്റ്യസ് പേഴ്സൺ ക്യാൻ വി സ്റ്റാൻഡ് ആസ് റൈറ്റ്യസ് പീപ്പിൾ ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് ലെറ്റ് മീ ടെൽ യു വി ആർ ഇൻ ട്വൻറ്റി ട്വൻറ്റി ഫോർ ദിസ് ഹാപ്പൻ മെനി 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 ഇയേഴ്സ് ബാക്ക് ഇൻ ഇസ്രായേൽ ആൻഡ് ദ ടാ ടൈം ഇറ്റ് സെൽഫ് ദ മൊറാലിറ്റി വാസ് ഡി കെ ബട്ട് ടുഡേ യു ലുക്ക് അറൌണ്ട് ദ മൊറാലിറ്റി ഹാസ് ഗോൺ ഇൻ ടു എ വേഴ്സ് സിറ്റുവേഷൻ ബട്ട് ഇൻ ദ മിഡ്സ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ദാറ്റ് മോറൽ ഡി കെ can we stand as a righteous people look in the word of god we find a lot of people who are called righteous noah was called righteous noah devam likana or needimanaya noah undayirunnu loth was a righteous person but when you come to new testament it says about loth is that valanyu poya oru needimana nanu vilikkunnathu he was a vexed a righteous person because of the situation than sodomi poi avadte agrathyavum karyangalum ella kandu valanju poya needimaan ennana lothine kurichu vilikkunnathu joseph of arimathi arimathi karnaya josephine needimaan ennu vilikkunnundu habel abel uh, is called as righteous joseph is called as righteous cornelius is called as righteous zechariah and elizabeth is called as righteous in the new testament there is someone called simeon in the in the temple he was called as righteous ingane anegare needima needivan ennu പുതിയ നിയമത്തിൽ വിളിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് ഷിമയോൻ സക്രായ സക്രിയ പുരോഹിതനും തൻ്റെ ഭാര്യയായ എലിസബത്തും നീതിമാന കൊർണലിയസ് യോസഫ് ഹാബേല് ജോസഫ് പരമത്തിയ ലോത്ത് ലോത്തിനെ വലഞ്ഞു പോയ നീതിമാൻ നോവ നീതിമാൻ ഇങ്ങനെ പലരെയും നീതിമാൻ നീതിമാൻ എന്ന് വചനം വിളിക്കുന്നു ഇന്ന് ദൈവം ലോകത്തിലേക്ക് നോക്കുമ്പോൾ വുഡ് ഗോഡ് കോൾ ഈച്ച് വൺ ഓഫ് അസ് ഹൈ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് എ റൈറ്റ്യസ് മാൻ ലിവിങ് ഇൻ ദാറ്റ് സിറ്റി ഇൻ ദ മിഡ്സ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ഓൾ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ഹാപ്പനിങ് i got a righteous person in that city people in atlanta georgia can we make the decision hey in the midst of all the immorality that is happening in this city or in this nation we would stand as god's righteous people people in the middle east 
can you make that decision over there in the midst of all the immorality and all the things that is happening that you would stand as as someone who uh, whom god would say that's a righteous person people from india different continents in each continent that you represent can you make that decision tonight hey i'm going to stand for god no matter what uh, immorality is happening around me i'm going to stand for the morality of the word of god i'm going to stand based on this morality i'm going to uphold this morality even when the world is upholding its immorality on a higher standard friends that is what god honors devam nokumbol devam abhimanathode nokunnathu thande pramanathe uyarthi pidikkunna oru vyakti undo nanana hallelujah loga prakaram logathinte morality pokki pidichal logam chalapol prashamsichu nara when you lift up the morality of this world and uh, do a lot of things maybe the world will appreciate you but god if god has to honor and god has to appreciate he looks for someone who holds on to the morality of the word or the ethics and morality the covenant the word of god amen so the first thing that i want to tell is there was a righteousness even during the time of moral decay judges are judging which means the land had some sort of sin happening there but even in that midst there was a righteous couple that we can find righteousness in the midst of moral decay the next theme is obedience ansarna obedience obedience we find obedience as a next theme in the book of ruth now uh, obedience in our everyday life it pleases god you know yeah, your obedience is something that pleases god nammade anusaranam devathine prasadamana you know it is uh, obedience is better than sacrifice somewhere we read right so uh, obedience to god obedience to god's word obedience to god's commandment these are very very important god looks at our obedience uh, that reveals in our character as well nammada subhavathilum adu velippaduvan idayagum so um, uh, when we reflect god's character through our interactions with others we bring glory to god nammada jeevithathil when we interact when we talk with others uh, we are actually revealing god through our lifestyle whatever that we are doing we are portraying god if you're doing bad we are bringing down the glory of we are not glorifying god through our life but if we are having a good character and portraying that to the world through our interaction through our action through our words then we are bringing glory to god look at over here Ruth's sacrifice and hard work to provide for Naomi that reflects God's love deiva snehatheyana Ruth inde jeevithathil kude Ruth kaanikkunathu tande kashtapaadil kude Naomi ku vendi provide even she goes to the field and works and gleans it shows uh, it shows God's love through her life look at Boaz's loyalty you know oru veendeduppu garan ennu illayil Boaz inde pravartana uh then look at naomi you know how she uh, uh, reflects of god's faithfulness you know and how naomi plans for ruth's future and all those it shows selfless love and all you now the book of ruth shows israel israelites uh, the blessing that obedience could or anusaranathil kude devathinte anugraham engena namakku ലഭിക്കാം എന്ന് ഉത്തമ ഉദാഹരണം റൂത്തിൻ്റെ പുസ്തകമാണ് ത്രൂ ദ ബുക്ക് ഓഫ് റൂത്ത് വി ഫൈൻഡ് ഔർ ക്ലിയർലി റീഡ് ഹൗ ത്രൂ ആർ ഒബീഡിയൻസ് ടു ഗാഡ് വി ക്യാൻ റിസീവ് സെർട്ടൻ ബ്ലെസ്സിങ്സ് ഫ്രം ഹെം യുനോ ലവിങ് ഫെയ്ത്ത്ഫുൾ നേച്ചർ ഓഫ് ദ ഗാഡ് നോ വി ഷോ ദോസ് നേച്ചർ ടു ഔട്ട് സൈഡ് യുനോ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ത്രൂ ഒബീഡിയൻസ് വി റിസീവ് ഓൾ ദോസ് ത്രീ നോ ഹൗ ക്യാൻ ഐ അപ്ലൈ ഇറ്റ് ഇൻ മൈ ലൈഫ് ഇത് എൻ്റെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ എങ്ങനെ അപ്ലൈ ചെയ്യുവാൻ കഴിയും ത്രൂ ആർട്ട് ദ ഹിസ്റ്ററി ഓഫ് ഇസ്രായേൽ യു നോ മീൻ പീപ്പിൾ വെൽ ലിവിങ് ഇൻ എൻ ഇറസ്പോൺസിബിൾ വേ വെൻ എവർ ദേ ലിവ് ഇൻ ഇറസ്പോൺസിബിൾ വേ ദേ ഗോ ത്രൂ ഓൾ ദീസ് പണിഷ്മെൻറ്റ് ആൻഡ് തിങ്സ് ലൈക്ക് ദാറ്റ് ദേ നീഡ് ടു ലേൺ ദാറ്റ് റെസ്പോൺസിബിലിറ്റി ആൻഡ് കം ബാക്ക് ടു ഫെയ്ത്ത്ഫുൾനെസ് നോ ഈവൻ ഇൻ അവർ ലൈഫ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് വെരി വെരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് വിസ്ഡം വിസ്ഡം വിസ്ഡത്തിൻ്റെ മലയാളത്തിലെ എന്തുവാ ജ്ഞാനം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ വിവേകം 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 ലോകപ്രകാരം എപ്രകാരം നമുക്ക് വിവേകം ഉണ്ടാകും എന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ വെൻ വി നോ എ ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് തിങ്സ് ഓ വി പീപ്പിൾ തിങ്ക് ഓ യു ഹാവ് വിസ്ഡം യു നോ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ദ വേൾഡ്ലി സ്റ്റാൻഡേർഡ് വിസ്ഡം ഇൻ എ വേൾഡ്ലി സ്റ്റാൻഡേർഡ് ഇസ് ദറ്റ് യു നോ എ ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് തിങ്സ് ബട്ട് ദ ബിബ്ലിക്കൽ സ്റ്റാൻഡേർഡ് ഓഫ് വിസ്ഡം ഇസ് നോട്ട് ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ ഹൗ മച്ച് തിങ്സ് യ
it's based on how 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 you act based on the things that you know arinja sambhavathinte meede engane pravartikkunu how do you put that into use is how bible considers as wisdom you know ariya oru veedu paniyumbol adu orappulla paadil paniyano nu arinjittu പോയി മണലിൽ മീതെ പണിയുന്ന ഒരു വ്യക്തിയെ നമ്മൾ വിസ് വൈസ് ആളെന്ന് പറയത്തില്ല ഫുളിഷ് തന്നെയാണ് ബൈബിൾ വിളിച്ചിട്ടുള്ളത് ബട്ട് യു നോ യു ഹാവ് ടു ബിൽഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഓൺ അ സോളിഡ് ഗ്രൗണ്ട് ബട്ട് യു ഗോ ആൻഡ് ബിൽഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഓൺ അ സാൻഡ് ദൻ യു ആർ കോൾഡ് ആസ് ഫുളിഷ് സോ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഓൾ ഇൻ യുവർ ആക്ഷൻ വട്ട് യു നോ വട്ട് യു ഹിയർ ഈവൻ ടുഡേ വൺ യു ആർ ഹിയറിംഗ് ദീസ് ക്ലാസ്സസ് വൻ യു ആർ സീറ്റഡ് ഇൻ ദിസ് ക്ലാസ്സസ് ആൻഡ് ലേണിംഗ് ഓൾ ദീസ് തിങ്സ് it is not in you learned or you have heard this class or you sat in these classes of shubhu pastor and all those things and you heard a lot of things no your wisdom is when you put it into practice whatever that you have learned from the word of god whether through a life of ministry of paul or through eschatology through uh, through the other books of the bible or spiritual warfare whatever you have learned it the wisdom is how you apply it in your life how you apply it in your life even in the midst of godless culture that we live in can we be just like ruth and boaz who would respond to the divine grace in faithful obedience even today god is giving his divine grace but can we we all know about god's divine grace but how are we responding back to that grace are we responding back in faithful obedience or are we just continuing in our spiritual sinful life are we willing to be obedient so obedience is a theme that is going throughout the book of ruth the next one is we find a female job a female job job in the pustakam namak ellavarkkum ariya but the book of ruth is considered as a female perspective of job a female version of job uh, and naomi is the person that is considered as job in the book of ruth യോബിൻ്റെ പുസ്തകത്തിൽ യോബിനെ ആണ് അവിടെ കാണിക്കുന്നതെങ്കിൽ റൂത്തിൻ്റെ പുസ്തകത്തിൽ യോബ് നവമിയാണ് സോ ദിസ് ഇസ് എ ഫീമെയിൽ ജോബ് ആൻഡ് നവമി ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് റിട്ടേൺ സോ ദി എൻറ്റയർ ബുക്ക് ഓഫ് റൂത്ത് ഇസ് റിട്ടേൺ ത്രൂ ദ പെർസ്പെക്റ്റീവ് ഓഫ് നവമി നവമീസ് വ്യൂ പോയിൻറ്റ് എവ്രി ഇവൻറ്റ് ഇസ് റിലേറ്റഡ് ബാക്ക് ടു നവമി യു ലുക്ക് ഹെർ ഹസ്ബൻഡ് ആൻഡ് സൺസ് ഡാറ്റ് ഹെർ ഡോട്ടർ ഓൺ ലോ ഹെർ റിട്ടേൺ ടു ബെത്ലഹേം ഹെർ ഗോഡ് her relative bowers her land and all those things naomi de bartavo makkal marichu poi naomi de marimakkal naomi tirichu bethlehem ilekku vannu naomi de deivam naomi de bendakkar naomi de bendathilulla bowers naomi de salam see look everything is related back to naomi so uh, that is why i said that book of ruth is skillfully written you know uh, it's it's a story that views god through the eyes of a woman or sthriyude kannil kude devathe engane kaanuvo adana ee ruth inde pusthathil it is mentioned it's seeing god through the eyes of a woman so uh, naomi has been compared to a female job a female job look just like job she also lost everything she lost her home she lost her husband she lost her sons and this she even lost her livelihood jeevida saadhita polum nashtapetta oru vyaktiyana navami now and she has become or she has been taken to the lowest rank of an israel person you know the poor widow oru israel le etum thaale kadakkel ulladana oru paavapetta vidave ennu parayunnathu Uh, there is nothing under that vidava nu vachal oru thaalatha class aanu adinirudha vidavakke onnum illengil then it is the lowest lowest uh, level in the israelite rank you know so she was poor and she was a widow and she cried out in her grief you know she cried out in her grief you know idella nadakkumbol she just cries out to god you know she says in in don't call me now me call me ru i mean call me mara and things like that and but even that time god has placed a root in her path when she is going through all those suffering when her husband is dying when there is famine when her sons died when she had to come back to um uh, bethlehem empty hand there is always a root that god has placed in naomi's life friends let me tell you when we are willing to be righteous before god doesn't mean that trouble will never come in our life 
doesn't mean that we, there won't be famines in our life. Doesn't mean that there won't be trouble in our life. But even then, God would never abandon us. Can we say an amen? Psalms 34 and verse 7 says, The righteous cried out and the Lord heard them. He delivered them from all their troubles. Even when we go through life situations or the phase of life that is similar to Job or of Naomi, God is telling, hey, I have seen you as righteous person, but right now you're going through a tough situation. Situation, but just cry out to me. I am going to pray, place a root in your life. I have placed a root right before you. In any situation that you are going through, there is a root that God has prepared for us. Any situation, any life circumstance of Naomi, if anyone is going through, uh, whether it may be literal or whether it may be in any areas of your life, that you have lost everything, that everything that you hoped on, everything that you thought of oh, this would be my future that has lost. God says, hey, you have not lost everything. I have placed a root in your life. I have placed a root in your life. Can we just open up our spiritual eyes and see tonight the roots that God has placed in each one of our life? You might call yourself, yes, God, Lord, I am a Naomi. I, I, why did I, I'm also having all the troubles like Naomi. I've lost everything. Everything that I have once had, I have lost. There is nothing that I can hold on to. There is nothing that I can claim to myself and the jeeva tell any kim urga pretty one now any kind of party one or identity will you will the birth of a muckle of and a video and the charge can a lane last up to more than the teacher in volume we're in kayo down and running even the boy apple at least has been the winning along the teacher in more on the middle but god says just open up your eyes there is a root that i have placed in your life and through that is where you're going to see the blessing that is going to come in your house and God is going to reward you. Friends, where is the root that God has placed in your eyes? Sometimes we don't see it. We just, we walk ignorantly, ignoring the blessings that God has placed in our life. But there is a root that God is placing in our life. One more theme I want to put before you before I close and that is emptiness and fullness or ruin and reward. If you look at that flyer that I sent I wrote in that ruin, redeem, reward. So there is emptiness and fullness throughout this book. Ruth and Epistom, Padikim Ball, Namal Khanan, the Ario, the Imana, Shuni the Im, Pinuri Nervin Janibo. Alangel Sagala the Nashta Pertuoi, Pashe Uru, Pradibala. Here and some bomb, and extremes. These two extremes are going intertwined within this book. That is the beauty of this book. If you read it, sometimes when you think, Ninga Chalapon, the Jericum, Ruth in the Postoga, Mahatit and the Ayatil Motom Shunidiana, Shamamunda, Bartao Maricuno, Maclorion, the Maricuno, Urimarimol, Vitatoi, Ruth Matreolo, Ruth and Kaiputichon, the Trichi Bethlehemi, you have no other scope, nothing. So, first few chapters, chapters has completely empty. The only blessing is in the final chapter, but no. You open your eyes. You can see the blessing is our fullness even in the first chapter as well. Sometimes we think our life is a, a ruin. But even in the midst of that, maybe in the eyes of the people and even your eyes, it is a ruin. But in God's eyes, he sees something that is flourishing on the other side. Chalapol in the namaka marava irikyum enda devam panadu ondu dikkinna enda. Pashe, adha panadu poorthi lethum bol namaka manisila om. Oh, even when I was going through a tough time, on the other side, God was preparing. Even when I was climbing the mountain with Isaac to sacrifice, on the other side, God was preparing a lamp for us as a Jehovah Jireh. You know, that is how beautifully this book is written to. Look at over there. Where did they live? They lived in the house of bread. As I said before, God changed that house from Bethlehem to Bethlehem as a house of bread. We saw that in the beginning. But now the house of bread is empty or it lacks one thing it is known for. Uh, it is known for the house of bread, but what it is known for, it is lacking right now. When you come to the New Testament, you will find something similar to it. House of bread, but that house is lacking bread. There is famine. 
Similarly, in the New Testament, there is something called the city of nine. Nine de patanam in the Namakaria. Nine de patanam. Nine means beautiful. Nine de patanam is a beautiful city. Manohre maya patanam. Pasha deva ma patanam in the Vadil Kilete Paul. Ah, Manohre maya patanam in the Agatun Verena Dandua. Nelevelated Shapta. What is coming out of a city that is called beautiful or a city of nine, which means beautiful? What is coming out of that city is distress. Despair, tears, hopelessness, pain, death. A widow is carrying the uh, coming out crying while other people are carrying the dead body of that widow's only son. It is painful. It is bitter. It is hopeless. It is despair. But let me tell you that, that city is known as city of beautiful. But what is coming out? What is coming out of that city is painful and not very beautiful. But look on the other side, there is something that is entering into that city. And what is entering into that city is Christ Jesus, the giver of life. Friends, let me tell you, you know, when Jesus enters, whatever the name of the city is or whatever is coming out of the city, it is totally going to change. God can change famine to fullness. He can change ro ruin to reward. How many of you can believe that tonight? Tonight, whatever the ashes of defeat that you are carrying and you have brought it out, God says, Hey, I'm going to send you back with glories of victory. Hallelujah. How many of you can believe that tonight? Hallelujah. He is a God who can turn empty to fullness, ruin to reward. A great theme that is going to this throughout this book. Hallelujah. The land is empty and this these people, they go to Moab. Moab, they go to Moab. You know, uh, yes, it is a time of famine. Everyone is empty, you know. But Naomi, you know, it's, that is something that you need to notice over here. I know my time is up, but I'll just conclude it within the next two, three minutes. Very important thing that did you notice over here. The city is in famine. Uh, Bethlehem and the Parnam Patanam is fully in famine. But just look over here. Naomi had some fullness. She didn't notice it. Naomi had some fullness. You know what that fullness was? She had a family. You know, the entire city is in famine. But look what Naomi has. Maybe she don't have bread, but she had an husband. She had a children. She is full. She is full. When she is leaving the city of empty, she is full. Now look, when the writer of the Bible says, she heard that the land is again back full and she is coming. But when she is coming back, we think she is empty. But as I said before, there is a Ruth that she has. She might have lost her husband. She might have lost her two sons. She might have lost one of her um, daughter-in-law. But she has a Ruth. Many a times we look on the outward empty. But God has placed some fullness even in the midst of those emptiness. You know, the city is empty. But inside, Naomi had a family when she departs. Bethlehem. When she comes back, we think, oh, she lost everything. But no, she gained a Ruth when she is coming back. We too many a time miss the Ruth that God is placing in each one of our life. We go through all these ruins and emptiness and we just say, Lord, why did you bring me here? Why did you do this to me? Why do but we miss to thank God for the Ruth that God has placed in each one of our life. Can we just thank God tonight? This first session itself. Thank you, Lord, for the Ruth that you have placed in the midst of all the famine, all the midst of loss that you that I went through in my life. You placed a Ruth in my life. The first chapter talk about a lot of death, but the last chapter talks about a birth. Two sons, Mahlon Kilion dies, all these things. But the last chapter talks about birth of generations. 
തലമുറകളുടെ ജനനത്തെക്കുറിച്ചാണ് അവസാനത്തെ അധ്യായത്തിൽ പറയുന്നത് friends uh, there are there are many other things that i want to say but let me tell you this thing you know as i conclude over here you know there are uh, let the quick recap that i want to give to you you know initially we saw bethlehem how god made it a bethlehem god can turn you the evil to good anything that is evil that or maybe the devil is bringing or maybe someone is planning or scheming or whatever it is evil god can turn it for good second god uses famine to discipline his people if anyone is going through a godly famine in your life in your individual life whatever it is think where you need to set things straight where you need to get back to god even god can use abundance in your life as a discipline to bring you back maybe you have everything but in the midst of that you can't enjoy it think where you have lost that relationship with god think about memory is a good gift think about the past how god brought you thus far what all god have taught you the promises he has given to you have you gone away from it if so get back the themes in the book of ruth that we looked at is righteousness even during moral decay can we stand as a righteous people in the midst of moral decay that is happening can we be obedient to god and his covenant in the midst of all the moral decay if we are also going through just like a female job or even through the life as a job or a naomi in our life god has placed a ruth god can turn emptiness to fullness and ruin to reward friends years later many years later jesus came as a descendant of this family in the same city of bethlehem where heaven's blessing was there in the story of ruth we can see that christ's birth is a part of the family history that depends on god you know devate aasrayikkuna oru kudumbathil ninnana christu janikkuvan idayayad a family that trusts god god will reside in that family friends if you are a family you know even in your individual life if you are someone who trusts god in that family god would reside god would come out and bring forth his glory in those family a family that trusted god christ came through that family christ becomes a part of our life when we to rely and depend on god in god's world it is normal for him to fill the empty and redeem what was lost devathin idu dhainandramaya oru sambhavam nammalano yo ella neernu poi nashtapettu shunyadeyanu nirasheyam adu but god he is in the he is in the job he is in the business of filling the the empty he is in the job of redeeming the things that are lost you know even as this entire year we as a church celebrate the year of restoration the things that are lost god is going to restore it back as even as we begin this new session in this new year friends let this also be a word for each one of you as a as a word of restoration wherever you think it is lost god is ready to restore it back for you in abundance in abundance just trust and rely in god fill your emptiness with jesus ningala shunyade evadano ed area lano maybe kudumba jeevitham maybe in your family life maybe in finance maybe in relationship maybe in love in peace academics whichever area you might be feeling emptiness fill it with jesus fill it with jesus and god would do greater greater mighty things in each one of our life can we just give ourselves in the hands of god tonight can we just or this morning early whichever time zone that you are early morning or late at night or at this very hour can we just give ourselves in the hands of god and say lord i trust you even in the midst of famine even in the midst of moral decay even in the midst of emptiness even in the midst of ruin even when everything is lost i would open up my spiritual eyes to trust in you for you have prepared a ruth for me and when i trust in you you are going to show forth your glory in my life in my family life those who believe it can everyone say an amen together
Can we just declare it tonight and say, Amen, Lord. This year, I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living as I trust in you. Amen, amen, amen. May God bless each one of you with these wonderful words and this blessed class. I hope you have taken down the notes and things like that. Uh, share it with me. I will share it in the group as well. Let it be a blessing. We'll see you all next week with much more themes and perspectives from the book of Ruth. I believe this was a great blessing as well. God bless each one of you.